So this is going to be how to set this scope up. Uh, if you'll focus in right here, you'll notice there's this little doohickey here. Uh, this you want to point towards north. So imagine north is that way. That's the way that you want this to be. So, you know, when you're like turning the scope, you'll just place this, have that point north. Then, you'll take this piece right here, this goes underneath this side. You'll unscrew this right here. And that will fall off. Just place it up inside there. This is uh, essentially a spreader uh, mechanism. Helps spread the legs apart. Alright, so we got that. Now, we want to take the mount. Okay. And where this little doohickey is, you are going to place inside that square area. You'll notice it's round. The square area right there is where you'll place this. So, just place it in like that. And it just kind of rests in there. Uh, and then you'll take the underneath side, push it up until you feel like it's threading underneath. And you'll spin this. And while you're doing that, make sure these little spreader arms right here, these little teeth, are on the legs. Because as you go further up, it's going to lock the legs out. And I could have before, I didn't do it, but these actually extend. They've got the little things right there, and they can extend so it can be higher, but for some reason, I started. Well, so we'll stick with that. It'll eventually stop. And that's kind of you're going to tell how it's secure. And then the bottom nut, keep going, and you'll get it. And it doesn't have to be like super tight, but you know, firm enough that you feel confident that the scope's going to be okay. So then, over here, this is what they call a German equatorial mount. You have a little, I don't know if you can see it, I can move it over here towards the light might be easier to see. We have these little mechanisms right here that will lock this in place. So just, and it doesn't have to be cranked down, just, to, just enough where it won't move. And then you also have another one over here, right there. And you can, and it prevents it from going that way. So crank that down. But now I just, a little hand tight, not crazy tight. And then the scope has what they call a dovetail mount that's going to slide inside there. And I didn't uh, show this part, but here is your corrector. I've already screwed that on. This is your visual backing, and I screwed that on top of that. And then this is your uh, star diagonal, and that just slides inside the hole and you just tighten these little rings right there. So, this is the mount. We're gonna place it inside here. These, once we get it there, these switches right here will tighten down to hold it in place. But actually, I got ahead of myself. We need to, these right here are two 11 pound counterweights. And this bar right here, here, we'll thread right in here, like so. This is what we're going to put the counterweights on. Good. Tighten that on. This is your safety uh, knob. When you put the counterweights on, they have a stopper right here. So what you do is you slide it on here, and what we've done is we put tape to that point is where you stop. Just crank that down until you feel comfortable. It doesn't have to be super, super tight, but it's supposed to stay there. And then you go and you put the second counterweight on. Slide it on like that. Tighten that down. And then you take that safety nut right in here. Oh, us. <laughs> oh, Murphy. 
So put that on like that. Then you'll take your, I call this an OTA, it's just the tube. Place it inside that area. I don't know, it's probably tough to cap. But actually, you'll notice a spot on the on the little mount. I don't know if you can focus on that. But you see that little worn down spot right there? It needs to be away from the light. Oh, okay. It's too much of a glare. How's that? Nope. There's a little spot right there, and that's where this little guy is going to thread in. There we go. Okay. Tough to do this one here. Alright, so screw that down. I should probably have it turned a little different, but this will work. So once it feels like it's pretty tight, then this isn't a safety. You'll always want to screw this one down as well. So now, you've got them both tightened and you feel pretty comfortable. Now remember those knobs that we tightened down? Now you'll loosen these. And now your scope will freely move. Now just to point out the reason why you put the counterweights here and the reason why I have it measured with tape is because you want the scope to be balanced. So you can kind of tell this is not balanced. I let go of that and it does like that. So what you want to do is It'll probably be a little bit, well actually no, because I don't have, once you put a lens in here, uh, you'll have a little bit more weight. And what you want is you want to be able to uh, have it horizontal, and you just want it to stay where you put it. So we need to adjust this. And that, since it's falling, since it's heavier back here, we want to push it forward a little versus if it was doing the opposite, we would move it back a little bit. So, to do that, be sure and hold on to the tube. Just loosen your safety knob. And now just loosen this one just a little bit. And see if you can slide it. I need to get on this side. how it's a little bit more balanced now and it all well see now it's a little bit heavy but once you put a lens in the back of it it gets it to that point where it uh, where it's level uh, other than that you've got these two cables uh, this one we even got that reverse that should be but that's an easy fix you just unscrew that and do like that. I'm trying to make this not too long for you guys. Uh, so this guy, there's a little plug-in. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Right there. You'll plug that in to your right here. So turn this. And let's see. Oh yeah, she's heavy. I don't know if you can uh, see the plugs over here. So, you've got the controller, which, I think it says hand controller. You just plug that in right there. And you just kind of, just rest, just leave it right there. And then this is the, well, not the auto guy, but without declination. Yeah. You plug that eh, into here. So you're all plugged in, uh, except for power. Uh, whereas you're gonna need a, a power pack. Uh, they call them power tanks off of Amazon. I can send you a link. Uh, or we also have a plug where you plug it into your 110 outlet. So if you have a balcony or something like that, or a patio, uh, you can just plug it in and use that. Otherwise, I'll send you that link to the power tank. I think they're like, 60, 70 bucks. It's just a big battery unit where you plug in a cigarette lighter, 12 volt. 
and then plug that in. Other than that, uh, I would recommend reading the manual, which I'm not sure if we have that anymore. I have to download that off of the internet. Um, but that's no problem. So let's draw on. Uh, you just type in this. I thought we had the manual, actually. Where are those two books? I have two books, or a book I was going to Oh, yeah, here's. I was with this. Star chart? I guess not. Okay, anyway. Uh, check for the manual online. And then here's all your lenses. Uh, oh, yeah, and you have the spotter scope. This will slide into these little holding rings right here, just like this. And this is, you know, so you can quickly find the star and then you can hone in on it with your focus. And what else? So we got that. It typically takes this lens, or this uh, tube typically takes about 45 minutes to about an hour to actually cool down so you don't see the, the heat waves um, off of the, the mirror. Uh, but it also depends on really the temperature. If it's super cold or if it's just just a little bit nippy. Uh, got all your lenses. You also have a Barlow. I'm assuming you probably, since you ha had a scope before, you know what a Barlow is used for. It just doubles the magnification of any of these lenses. You also have filters, moon filter, and then some colored filters. And that's about it. Hope this helps. Signing off.